Hi! Do you guys know my buddy Dieter Dirtbag? Dieter climbs pretty well, so he has a rope sponsor and therefore doesn't need to buy his ropes. If the rope is dirty, he orders a new one. Dieter always likes to leave his rope directly in the car because he almost needs it always everywhere he's going. Dieter doesn't like to carry his rope either because he won't have the strength later on in the attempt. And rope bags are too complicated for Dieter, but Dieter likes chalk, a lot of chalk. Dieter prefers to chalk before every single move, but in any case before clipping. Even if he pulls himself up on the rope after a fall, he prefers to do it after he has chalked. Reuse, recycle, repair, bio-based yarns, recycled yarns. The industry is currently trying to establish new, more resource-saving production methods everywhere, including in the mountaineering sector, also in the rope sector. The goal is, of course, to reach more eco-friendly products. But did you know that how you treat your rope plays a great role in how eco-friendly it actually is? In this video, I'm going to show you how you can help reduce the footprint of a climbing rope. Chalk is nothing more than dirt or dust in the rope and dirt can significantly affect the life of a rope. To illustrate this, I have prepared this simple experiment setup for you. I fix a climbing rope to the ground and attach the other side of a short piece to an 80 kg weight. In between, I clip the rope to a carabiner that hangs from a winch. The carabiner is a new standard steel carabiner as it is used in most climbing gyms. I mark a section about 30 cm long on the rope and then lift the weight with the winch so that the carabiner moves between the two markings. I note one lifting or a lowering movement as one cycle. For the first part, I will use a new unused and clean rope and try out how many cycles I can do until the rope sheath is seriously damaged. I lift the weight, I lower the weight. I lift the weight, I lower the weight. Okay, now 200 cycles are through and we want to take a closer look to the rope. Yes, I think you can clearly see the thread that has formed in the carabiner. But however, there are no damaged fibers to be seen. The rope is not roughened or even damaged. In the next part of the experiment, I will use the same setup. But after the first cycle, however, I apply some chalk to the thread of the rope and we want to see how the rope looks after 10 cycles. Eight. Nine. And 10. Okay, we stop the attempt and evaluate the condition of the rope. Yes, I think it's clear how much the dirt has affected the wear here. In a clean state, you can still see no damage after 200 cycles. In the dusty test, the rope already looks like this after the first 10 cycles. Okay, let's do a third test. Exactly the same as the second attempt, but this time I want to test after how many cycles the sheath of the rope breaks. So again, chalk on the thread of the rope and lift and lower and raise and lower and raise and lower. 13, 14, 15, oh, that doesn't look good anymore. And yes, 16, the sheath is completely torn. Well, I think this simple experiment shows very well how much dirt and dust influence the friction between carabiner and rope. And of course, understandable, the greater the friction, the greater the wear. It's of course clear that the rope cannot be kept completely clean. However, the test also shows well that we managed almost 20 times as many cycles between clean and chalked application. And I finished the test with the clean rope before even the slightest damage to the rope was visible. So every little bit that we dirty our ropes less will significantly extend the life of the rope. So here are a few concrete tips for handling ropes. Do not store ropes permanently in the trunk. The dry air and the often high temperatures dry out the ropes. Ideally, ropes are stored lying down in a cool and dark room. Use a rope bag, whether for transport or then on the wall or in the climbing gym. 
most of the dirt is picked up by the ropes on the ground. Before going home, shake out the rope bag again. The dirt and the dust that remain in the rope bag will involuntarily end up in the rope bag at some point. Gently chalk, and it's best not to take the rope in your hand immediately after chalking. Chalking, climbing, clipping, chalking. Before pulling yourself up on the rope after a fall, tap your hands briefly. We manufacturers always try to keep the footprint created during the production of ropes as small as possible. Among other things, by trying to develop ever more durable constructions. In this way, we are moving forward in very, very small steps. If you keep your rope clean, the service life of a rope can be easily doubled. No action we could take as a manufacturer has a similar large effect on the footprint of a rope.